Let the peace, love and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the inhabitants of the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Those who will go to hell. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth Leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the Supernatural Teacher. First lesson, St. John chapter 3 verse 8. Second lesson, Revelation 13 verse 10. Golden text, St. John chapter 8 verse 48. Quote, We have a publication for those who will go to heaven. I am releasing to you another gospel to those who will go to hell. The names of those who will go to heaven are in the Lamb's Book of Life, while those who will go to hell are in the Devil's Book of Doom. The number of those who will go to hell are countless, but those who will go to heaven are numbered. Many of us may put on the white robes, calling ourselves brotherhood, when we are not victorious over sins. The white robes and girdles are for those who are victorious. Satan does not put on the white robe. All those who dive deep in sin are those who will go to hell. Know it that it is Satan which is host, including his false prophets, false evangelists, false apostles, false pastors, false popes, reverend fathers, mothers and sisters, and so forth. Any person, therefore, who continues in sin is of the devil, and his abode is in hellfire. This was why Jesus Christ, in his prayer, stated categorically that he did not pray for the children of perdition but for those whom the father had given him christ never said that all were saved he knew that the disciples were clean but even in this case not all of them he knew that there were 12 but one was a devil. He knew that there were children of perdition. So he always ended his sermon saying, He that hath hears, let him hear. Satan has no hearing ears. His ears have been stopped from hearing the word of God. I have been teaching you from January to January. But the amazing thing is that nobody has repented by refraining from all manners of sin. Your persistent in sin would have been reasonable if Satan had been mounting the altar to teach you. When I come down from the altar, but in the consequence, Satan has nothing to offer you than a place in hellfire. The pity of it all is that people are competing in sin. You must not allow any angel or spirit to deceive you that a sinner will inherit, will inherit the kingdom of God. The brotherhood of the cross and star is the kingdom of God and not that of Satan. If you have been taught but you continue in sin, it means that you have been predestined for hell. It is clear that no matter how, how the two palms are clasped together in pretended prayer, no sinner will inherit the kingdom of God. Satan and his host must go to hell. Now you find people competing in sin. 
they sow the seed of discord and disunity and defile themselves. They hate their own bodies. The Son of God has been sent to destroy the works of Satan. Therefore, Satan with death, the various elements, including the seed and the havoc done by these elements, will go to hell. Satan had been vanquished and his judgment is eternal destruction in the bottomless pit of hell. Satan in frustration has established all the cults, lodges, secret societies, all the black magic powers and lying wonders are employed by Satan to sustain his empire. All the so-called churches are the network of Satan's telecommunication systems. They are ushered in by Satan. Governmentally, God never established any court or prison. All these are introduced by Satan. All the good virtues of God dwell in man. Any person who sins takes up the likeness of Satan. You have been exhorted to refrain from telling lies and from living in falsehood. You have been warned not to lie to the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to reveal God and His kingdom on earth. He came in Trinity as the Son of Man, the Son of God and God Himself. The likeness of God is in man. The Son of Man is God. The Son is the Son is man. God is man and man is God. God in human form has revealed his nature as mercy, forgiveness, humility, patience, love. These virtues of God are indwelling in man. Therefore, if you deceive or tell lies, to any human being, it means that you are telling lies to God. You have seen God, the way He lives, and you must also live as He lives. The Son of God came to put an end to the shackles of Satan, so that Satan might not deceive you to be revengeful or tell lies, fornicate, Lack mercy and patience are to be arrogant. Death is not serving God. Satan is not serving God, but himself, by seeking his own glory. This gospel is therefore given to differentiate between God and Satan, and where those who serve Satan will end up. Satan has impressed upon you that you are graciously saved. It is no grace to continue to sin. The grace that is given to mankind is our Lord Jesus Christ. That grace is grace. When you practice telling the truth, being pure, humble, kind, patient, merciful, forbearing, tolerant, and so forth, what does it cause any person to refrain from fornication, idolatry, anger, annoyance, quarrel, disputes, and so forth? Any person who knows that God is mercy, love, truth, kindness, gentleness, lowliness, humility, and so on, must endeavor to resemble him in these virtues. Why did God dismiss Adam from the Garden of Eden? It was because of sin. What has been the root cause of sickness, poverty, anger, greed, and starvation today? Why did God destroy the world of Noah? 
All troubles facing mankind is caused by sin. Satan is responsible for them. Some people may say that Satan is a spirit or a snake. No, Satan is a man. He might get some followers who are apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, reverend fathers, mothers, sisters, etc. Do you remember Christ saying that one of the disciples was Satan? That disciple was sitting close to his master. Judas Iscariot is the son of, is the son of man. He was a man and was Satan. The trinity of the Godhead is also manifested in Satan. Our Lord Jesus Christ likened the kingdom of God to a saw who sowed good seeds on his farm during the daytime. But at night Satan went and sowed bad seeds amongst the good seeds. The owner of the farm making a remark to the inquiring servant who saw a mixture of good and bad seeds said that it was the work of the enemy. Our Lord Jesus Christ making this analogy was referring to Satan, an enemy to all godly virtues. The enemy is the person who blasphemes, kills, fornicates, backbites, gossips, steals, reckons sins on others and so forth these are the enemies of the glory of god this is why christ said that many are called but few are chosen a great many people are putting on white garments professing to be brotherhood they go about as wolves in sheep's clothing they go about causing untold harm and havoc to people in high places. They may be married, but will keep many girlfriends. They will use their cars and riches to trap girls and misdirect them into careless living. Surely such persons will go straight to hell. A native doctor, a magician, an idolater, or a society man may boast to you that his wife who was barren has become fruitful while you are still childless despite your claims to the to despite your claims of devoted life to God. He may boast of getting his promotion from time to time when you have none. If you say that God loves a sinner and turn around to follow such a person, you are going to hell with him. Why was Lot saved and his wife perished? If you allow worldly surroundings to mislead you, you your abode will be in hell fire. It was because of sinfulness why the great flood destroyed the world of Noah? Was it not Satan who was responsible for the death of Peter, Stephen, John the Baptist and other prophets and apostles? Was it not Satan who was responsible for the death of God's messenger? Was it not Satan who tempted, blasphemed and killed our Lord Jesus Christ? It was Satan who asked our Lord Jesus Christ to jump from the pinnacle to demonstrate his sovereignty. It was Satan who asked Christ to fall down and worship him. It was Satan who passed death sentence on Christ. It was Satan who killed him. Lack of steadfastness, patience, endurance, mercy, forbearance, etc. will take many people to hell our lord jesus christ had satan had set an example when he was spat on abused and cursed he overcame satan and his agent saint paul is another example he was beaten imprisoned opposed here and there but he suffered 
so that he might win Christ. Daniel was steadfast because he knew whom he trusted. In your own case, why do you fall to the suggestions that when you continue to sin and continue to confess your sins, you should be pardoned? Do you know that a son or daughter must resemble his or her father? So, those who came to receive instructions and also to resemble my practical life but continue to sin, believing that they are saved by grace, have got their names written in black letters for hell. Satan's teachings always leads one to death. The churches founded on the code of life of Satan will resemble their father, the devil. Let the first lesson be read. First lesson, St. John 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You always shout that Christ is a friend of sinners and that he is your leader. Is he a sinner? Do you know that whosoever you must do you know that whosoever you trust is your master? The person you serve, the person from whom you receive commands, to whom you listen and to whom you take instructions is your master. The entire universe is an object of great pity, but yet they claim to know God and his ways. Who has ever deceived you that a sinner has any place in heaven? The, the population of the children of Israel who were above 20 years in the wilderness total 600,000, but only two entered the promised land of Canaan. The report showed that their corpses were scattered on both sides of the road. 23,000 of them died in one day because of fornication. Several others died because of idolatry. Thousands of them died because of murmuring against God and so forth. If all these people died because of one sin or the other, why do you console yourself with the fanciful suggestions of Satan? Can Satan continue to deceive you by asking, If all liars will die, who will remain for God? Or, if all those who drink wine will die, who then will remain for God? I tell you that if a single, if a single murderer or fornicator or a liar ever enter into the kingdom of God, you will have to challenge God on his righteousness. I assure you that the great day of the Lord has not yet come, but when that comes, it will be disastrous and tragic and you will have to challenge God if anything unclean, any sinner will enter into his kingdom. God created all things in their respective places. He created man as an autonomous being and, and equipped him with all the thinking faculties. But man has surrendered his glory to the low creatures. Man has made the trees, the dead wood, the stones, angels, etc. to be his God by worshipping them. The lesson of today is to show you all those who will go to hell. God has given man freedom of choice and he can go anywhere he likes. If you decide to tell lies, you can continue with it. But be assured that no liar will enter into the kingdom of God. If a man 
has a son. The son must resemble his father. God created Satan holy and undefiled in his own likeness. Just as a child will fail to resemble his father by getting into bad company, so does Satan left his first state of holiness, righteousness, truth, peace, etc., and became an opposition to God. This is the way Satan started his life. When a child starts to do something, when a child started to do some good things, the mother or the father will praise him. But when he starts to exhibit evil practices, the parents will give him a, a name that is descriptive of his evil deeds. If the child is fond of going out with boys to fornicate, she may, she may be called an harlot. The parents will often say to her, you this harlot. If he is a boy and goes into the company of other boys to pilfer, he may be called a rogue. The child is given a name to show his pattern of behavior. When you were not an harlot, nobody called you an harlot. Similarly, when you did not engage in highway robbery or in pilfering, nobody called you a thief. In the same way, you gained the, the title of being an Armark member when you joined the Armark cult. When you serve or render services to Satan and his agents, your place is in hellfire. You will find people the world over joining societies to do one kind of havoc or another. The Bible says that those who raise up the sword against others will die with the sword. Have you not heard that if you kill by the sword, you will also be killed by the same instrument? Why do you prejudge others by passing death sentences on people that God created by himself? Why do you destroy what you cannot create? The power of taking away any life is solely and wholly in the hands of Jehovah God and his Christ. God authorized no government to take away any life. Is there any government greater than that of Nebuchadnezzar or that of King Pharaoh, who along with his, with his armies were drowned in the depths of the sea? Did God command that you should take the law into your hands and use human laws to pass that sentence on the highest creation of God? If you do this, your place is in hellfire. Those judges who argue that it is the law and not they who condemn or the executioners who plead that they are doing their assignments by law are gravely mistaken because their abode is in the deep pit of hell. Didn't Pilate do the same thing? Did that save him? You always claim that you are saved by grace and you continue to sin. The world is faced with all kinds of troubles, sicknesses, tribulations, sufferings, deprivations, etc. What do you see and hear are no judgments yet. There, these are merely preambles. The real judgment of God will be very terrible and just. The scripture says that if you think evil of somebody, someone else will in turn think evil of you. If you point an accusing finger to some, at someone, four fingers are pointing at you. This is why deceitfulness and falsehood will continue to multiply. You will notice that when you take bribe before you do a favor for someone or discharge your lawful duty, 
Someone will also demand bribe from you when you are in similar plight. As you deceive someone to get money, you will also be duped by another person. If you force out somebody's wife, your wife will also desert you. This is the reason why the entire world is in confusion. Tell me, have you found peace anywhere in the world? A sinner has no peace. A sinner lives in hellfire. You are never in peace with your family. Every human institution is in hell. What is hell? Hell is a condition of eternal torment, torture, lawlessness, all types of killing and cheating, a den of thieves and robbers, falsehood, hatred, anger, sickness, death. Yes, the wicked has no peace, said the true God. Satan keeps on deceiving you that you are saved by grace. My question is, has, has that salvation by grace come to you? If so, why do you live in torment, deceit, fear, and danger? If you continue to live in sin, the obvious fact or bitter truth is that a sinner has no place in heaven. His abode is hell, a condition that can give him no peace. Let the second Bible lesson be read. Second lesson, Revelation chapter 13 verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of saints. I want to give you an example from the contemporary world. What is their relationship between Egypt and Israel today? Have you seen this grace that is brought? The Arabs and the Israelites have no peace because they continue to destroy themselves. To look for peace when you continue in wickedness is a daydream. You are obviously in hell and therefore cannot get peace. This is the day of vengeance by the Spirit of God. I remember proclaiming to the various governments of Nigeria to refrain from war as it would be very destructive. The proclamation was ignored. The Nigerian conflict later took such a dimension that you all were witnesses to the wanton destruction of human lives either as an outright savagery or because of sickness and starvation. No prayer can put away this fact that when you kill with the sword, you also will be killed with the sword. Christ had taught that you must love one another. Love does not harm. Do love does no harm to a neighbor. Whatever instrument you use in killing, the same instrument will be used in killing you also. Why is that grace by which you claim that you are saved never let you know that Christ has shed his precious blood to give you peace? Why does the name of our Lord Jesus Christ reign supreme in the whole universe? It is because he did not kill. He had not come. If, if he had not come, the world would have continued to destroy themselves. The names of Moses, Abraham, Melchizedek, Elijah, etc. are not entombed in the kingdom history because, because they killed others. None of the people of old had any peace. Moses had no peace, neither in his own life nor in his official capacity as leader of his people. In the same way, Solomon had no peace because he killed. Any person who kills 
must be killed. In spite of all these examples, you stiffen your necks and continue to say, but for brotherhood, I would do this or that. Have you not heard that any person who kills will be killed? Why was Moses prevented from entering the promised land? Do you not remember what Jacob told Levi and Simon? That the instrument of cruelty would never depart from their habitation because in their great anger they killed a stranger who had defiled their sister. They killed this stranger after the man had pleaded for an exchange of marriage and Jacob accepted his plea. Simon and Levi, Simeon and Levi felt that it was an unpardonable crime. They went and lay waited the man and killed him in cold blood. Their father pronounced a curse to their anger and from that time the sword had never departed from their household. Their offspring have been suffering violence. Have you not seen that fornication and murder are twins? They brought untold sorrow to the houses of Simeon and Levi. This is the cruel effect of sin. You claim that you are beloved son of God when your name is in hell. Give this gospel to the various governments of the world. Give it to the so-called churches of Christendom. Give it to the other highly placed men in the society. Give it to the soothsayers. Give it to the laborers on the farm. Give it to the traders in the markets for them to reassess themselves. Let the golden text be read again. Golden text in John chapter 8 verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? There is no small sin. Sin is sin. There is no magnitude of sin that is free from penalty. All evils emanate from Satan and their end is in hell. Any person who kills is Satan. Cain who killed his brother Abel was the son of Satan, the son of man and Satan himself. It is, hum it is human beings that tell lies. They are the children of Satan. They are Satan incarnated in human flesh. It is man who commits fornication. He is the son of Satan and he is Satan. Who ever told you that a sinner is son of God and is loved by God? The disciples sold all they had and put the money into the common purse. Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, out of their own volition, went and sold theirs but kept back part of the money. Peter, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, said to Ananias, Why art Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? He died because of telling lies. His wife, who was a party to the deceit, also died. People regard telling lies as a trivial sin. You may say that you are only telling small lies. You are sinning against God and your place is in hellfire. Satan is the chief and author of every sin. Satan entered the heart of Judas' career. He betrayed his master. Satan is so mobile and free to enter into any victim and to leave him when he finishes his work. The same thing happened to Judas' career. When Satan left him, 
it was then that he knew himself to have smeared the blood of an innocent person in the palms of his hands. He threw his thirty pieces of silver at the elders, but this was too late. Satan had already accomplished his work in him. He did not enjoy the money, and finally he killed himself. Where is heaven? Heaven is here on earth. It is righteousness, goodness, humility, love, long-suffering, patience, lowliness of mind, peace, kindness, joy, mildness, self-control, etc. A condition of faithfulness in the harmony with God, the habitation of God. On the other hand, when you have none of these godly virtues, you are in hell. When evil thoughts around you, fear grips you under worried atmosphere, sleeplessness and restlessness. Man, you are in deep hell. Take a look at Adam and Eve. They were quite happy in the garden of God. They suffered no tribulation, no hardship, and they were served by the lower creatures. They had dominion over the lower creatures. They enjoyed good fellowship with their Creator God. They were in heaven. They were commanded to eat of every fruit found in the garden except that of the forbidden tree in the middle of the garden, which was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Drawing away from God. When you are tempted, do not say that you are tempted by God. Do not say that it is God who causes you to sin. It is your driving passion and lust which drives you into sinfulness. When you look for your personal glory, fame and profit, you are drawing away from God. In the same manner that Eve was convinced by her passion, greed and lust, you also succumb to temptation. Both Adam and Eve decided to break the law of God by yielding to their own lust, lack of self-control. They were free moral agents, having free minds and free thinking faculties. Eve took her idea to Adam, who, in his endeavor to please his wife, accepted her suggestion. God's nature was self and man's lust enthroned. The tree in the middle of the garden that they ate was nothing else but fornication. The, 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 prognitors, the prognitors of the garden of Eden in frustration waved off all the restrictions of God. It was not God who drove them away from the garden. Both of them ran away and hid themselves. Adam argued that it was Eve who induced him to eat the forbidden fruit. Eve on her, Eve on her part said that it was the serpent. The serpent was the lust and driving passion to which both of them yielded. From that time, God closed his mercy door against man and pronounced sentence on both of them. To the woman, God said that she would scratch the ground in deep pangs and pains at childbirth. Adam was similarly cursed to win his bread through the sweat of his face. Human troubles and their, had their start from there. Have you not seen that you have no peace? What other hell do you think of them? What other hell do you think of them than where you are now? The need for a redeemer. Our Lord Jesus Christ saw that the punishment of man was too great. So he came to return man back to the Garden of Eden by giving a simple law that we must love one another. But you continue to hate and devour each other. 
What do you want God to do after he had provided a redeemer? Adam was the house of God, the dwelling place of God. He was the Christ of God. But he polluted the dwelling place of God by sinning. God did not like what he did. So, from that time onward, tribulation, hardship, and sorrow dogged the footsteps of Adam. Dogged the footsteps of man. You have been told to refrain from fornication, but some of you say that you will do it bit by bit. You will certainly end up in hell as you continue in it. The names of all those who continue in these sins are boldly, are boldly written in hell. You always hear people saying that the leader is good, no matter how you sin. And even if your sins are in the worst category, he will always welcome and embrace you. The Bible says that not all those who call me Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. When you steal, do not say that it is God who induced you to steal. It is your greed, passion, and lust dragging you to sin. All sinners who violate the laws of God will end up down in everlasting hell fire that burns with sulfur. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.